it's been a while since I've been on this channel. Um, I want to say I appreciate the comments on some other videos. Someone was trying to reach out, but sorry, bro, if you were serious, you would have sent an email. Um, this is going to fall into what I want to talk about today. It looks like I've become a Christian nihilist. And this sounds like complete absurdity that such a thing is impossible. How can you be a nihilist? Because those who believe in nihilism are those who believe nothing matters at all, that everything is meaningless. Well, we find in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 that uh, Solomon says everything is meaningless. You know, and others will argue the context, the context. Well, hear me out. I am a Christian still simply because of the supernatural change. If I was one of those people who just went to church and was just infatuated with the Christianity culture of all gumbaya, lovey gooey, fake, toxic positivity stuff we see in Joel Olstein's church, I would have been a complete nihilist at this point, or an atheist, or I don't even know what, right? But ultimately, the only reason I still carry the name Christian is because of the supernatural change to my heart. If that didn't happen, I would have completely fallen away. But what has made me a nihilist at the same time is that I realized that there is no place for us in this world anymore. There isn't a single place for Christians. I have tried to lead many campaigns against the forces of evil using my God-given skills in many different departments. I have tried to amass an army or a group or a community of fellow Christians in which we all working together under the same goal that we wish to inspire the world, right? to seek the Lord Jesus out. That was my final mission. From being a pagan who just wanted to live for pleasure, then not being a pagan and being a Muslim, but pretty much the same thing. Um, and then finally being a Christian and believing that perhaps I should be a preacher. I, I am meant to, to preach, but then I don't meet the standards and qualifications to be a pastor found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, which nobody ever reads that chapter to see if their own pastor is qualified. They all carry Bibles into the church or have it on their phone, but nobody tests that is this man qualified to lead the sheep. Nobody does that. I've been doing that ever since day one being saved, always examining the book, going by the book, and people telling me it's not so black and white. I finally learned what they meant by that. But the problem is um, there's too many loopholes when you just want to live by. There's too much gray zone, bro. You need to, you need to relax. If you're really saved, you can't relax. If you're really saved, you are bothered by all the evil in this world. I said there's no place for us in this modern age anymore. And this is true because no Christian alive 200 years ago plus ever lived as long as we live today. I have the knowledge equivalent to Solomon himself and many of you will say you absolutely lost it, you're crazy. No, I'm being dead serious. The things that I know are just beyond normal people's capacity. Completely so, right? People who've been in the church for 50 years know only 5% of what I know. And all of this is wisdom from above. Supernatural wisdom given to me. Even Solomon said in verse 18 of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Now, the sorrow for me is not coming because uh, of all the wisdom I have, but I suppose it plays a tiny hand in it. 
but it's mostly the realization that we don't have a place here anymore. Christians 200 years ago plus never lived as long as we've been living today. Today, we cannot fulfill the Great Commission. We can't. You want to know why? Because literally ever since the end of World War II, everybody has been indoctrinated to be a Gnostic or some form of Antichrist. Young people today under the age of 25 are either atheists or Gnostics. And these Gnostic younglings, they believe that the Christian God is actually the Demiurge, who is a creator evil God that stole power from the other gods and now has created this evil world. They refuse to accept and understand what Genesis says that God cursed the world because Adam and Eve ate the fruit. They refuse to read that black and white. But if you tell them that, they'll say, well, that, that definitely means he's evil. He cursed the world. Why would he do that? Mm, I don't know, bro. Maybe because they, they, they sinned and ate the fruit. And many will say, well, that's not fair for the rest of us that we have to be born here and suffer just because of one stupid person eating the fruit and so on. now we're all screwed. Well, I would agree with that, but the thing is, there's a way out. And the way out was paid in blood, but nonetheless, nobody cares anymore because they've been brainwashed to be antichrist. Every single day, I will hear people say the Lord's name in vain at least five times, bare minimum. Whether that's at the shop, the street, on the computer, on TV, in a movie, on the radio, people in my own language, people in villages, use the Lord Jesus' name in vain, in their own language. And I'm like, this is Omega indoctrination. If I were to correct a savage from the village that don't disrespect the name of my God, they'll be like, what are you talking about? That's not disrespect. I'm, I'm just saying it, you know? Well, you're calling it out in vain. Isn't that like the third commandment? Right? Oh, they don't care though. And when I say that our mission is over because we've lived too long, this has created nihilism for me. This has created meaninglessness for me. It's completely meaningless now to remain alive. People say, well, you need to fight, brother. You need to represent Jesus. How? Tell me how. How do you represent the Lord now when you, you're pretty much in a prison? You're in a hole. You don't exist. You feel like you don't exist. You feel like everything you touch, you phase right through it. You feel like the people you're talking to are brick walls. You think people care about your representation of the Lord? They don't. But aside from that, aside from representation, right? It's what you say. It's, it's, it's your mission, what you are doing daily in order to, to reach the hearts of the many or to inspire the hearts of the many. And this isn't possible. It's become in vain. It's become in vain because the people's hearts are completely hardened like steel. Timothy chapter 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, people will not have the endurance of sound doctrine. That is an understatement in the dispensation we're in now. As a Christian nihilist, I find it completely meaningless to keep on moving forward when there is no fruit that can be bared from all the seeds that we cast. Now, I know some will pull up the scripture of Corinthians where Paul said, look, we just, we just throw the seed, we water it, but the Lord is in charge of the increase. From my observation, people are rejecting the seed. The seed is not even going in. It's not even going in, but you know what? That's not really my biggest problem. My biggest problem is that I've realized that for the past couple of years, 
I was unaware that I was actually guilty of a noble lie. A lie is a lie. Jesus said so himself, every kind of liar will be thrown in the fire. White lie, noble lie, whatever lie, you are going to the fire. And I've realized that there are many Christians, pastors who have become liars, but they have no awareness that they have. One has completely lost his mind and he can't see that he is rather fat with a giant belly. People have called him out on it and he said, no, I'm not. I don't have a big belly. And I, I, could, I could not believe what I was hearing. His gut is enormous and he's that delusional. I realized that because there doesn't seem to be any fruit, tangible fruit that you see, not this online rubbish. This online rubbish doesn't work. We were never meant to preach online. It doesn't work, right? It does not work. People can boast and say, well, I have hundreds of people who sent me an email and said, thank you, um, you know, because of you this, because of you that. And then months later, you find out that actually it was a portion that they were thanking you for. The other portion is complete garbage. They are defenders of liars. They are people who prefer what tickles their ears, but they like that one part you were saying. A lot of the people who have complimented me for my videos, for what I say, it's always about how I say it. It's always about how articulate you are. Well, what about the substance? What about the words itself? Would you read what I say if you couldn't hear what I say? Probably not. Making these people hypocritical, right? Making almost all of us, in fact, all of us hypocritical. And when I say all of us, I mean that because I was guilty of a noble lie. I established something saying, I want us to inspire people to care about the Lord once more. And to inspire them, I'm going to create um, Christian media. But that isn't so overt, but covert. But then I realized that people are so brain dead now that basic comprehension skills are non-existent. And thus, when I realized this, I forged on ahead that, nah, it doesn't matter. We we're just going to keep going. But after so many products that I have released and I have seen the feedback from people, I realized that these people literally can't understand what they are hearing, what they are seeing, what they are reading they can't they cannot understand it's as if they are cognitively impaired would you preach to a deaf person if someone had no ears would you would you bother talking to them would you bother preaching to a mummy who's in a tomb because that's pretty much how people are now they are a bunch of mummified deaf individuals who only operate on how they feel and the attraction to my videos is the tone of my voice the authority behind my voice and they are attracted by that it's a sustenance they are not used to and then they want to equate it as to like you are definitely blessed well i know i'm blessed in deciphering the scriptures and everything but what when they say i am blessed you're not telling me that i'm blessed because i know what i'm talking about you're telling me you're blessed because of how i sound and how much you like it this is completely not what the lord intended we're not living for the lord anymore we are conjuring up new ways new reasons to stay alive Creating noble lies as I did unaware. But now that I'm aware of it, I want no part of it. In order to convince myself to wake up the next morning, I had to lie to myself, step into a delusion as to like, one day this is going to matter. But here's what I realized 
about lying to yourself using a noble lie. You legit start to lose self-awareness. And when you start to lose self-awareness, you become a hazard. You become dangerous because soon deception in its entirety is going to wrap itself around you. And before you know it, deception will start coming out of your mouth. You start twisting things in order to validate how you feel at the time because now you're not operating on the standards of what's written. You're operating on the standards of what you feel because what's written seems to not be having much effect for you anymore. And the reason why is because of the world we live in. We are in a post-Christian world. You can say the world has always been anti-Christian, sure. But the only difference is people were sincere back then. Now people are insincere, brains vaporized to the max, incapable of understanding anything. The literacy rate here in Africa, in America, has significantly dropped. Young kids brain dead thanks to the iPad, the internet frying their brains. Older people of no use at all because they have no wisdom to offer their young, no standard to guide them by nothing. It's become pointless. It's totally become pointless. I was like, wait, so I woke up today and I was excited to do something because I lied to myself. This is what I did recently. Two days ago, after discovering that I was guilty of a noble lie, I realized that, wait, I've been lying unaware and I've been telling people that onwards to battle everyone, onwards to making a change. I believed that a change was possible. I believed it. And that's why I was I was on the mission. I was on the ground marching forward. But then when I realized that this can't this this won't succeed. This cannot be successful. The reason for marching was taken away from me. The reason to keep going was taken away from me. Imagine they tell you, go seize that castle. And then you find out there was never a castle. Are you going to keep marching forward? Imagine you're told you need to keep cooking food for the masses because they're hungry. Suddenly the masses are no longer hungry. They prefer soil and green. Speaking of soil and green, it's now being sold. Even here, dead people flesh. Some will say, no, that was just a movie, bro. That was just a movie. The movie Soil and Green was dead people. How do you know it's not dead people now? Why? Just because you're looking at the back of the product and looking at the ingredients, you think they're telling you everything? That's true? We have dead people on the shelves right now. I'm not interested in eating dead people. It hasn't become mainstream, but the mere fact that Soylent products are being sold even here, best believe, as they said in 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. You're going to eat bugs and worms, but now it's actually you're going to be eating dead people turned into goo, protein goo, protein porridge and whatnot made from your dead relative. But you won't know that. This And you can't even tell anybody this. You can show them the reference of your claim. Look, they made a movie about it. Hey, a lot of these movies were predictable programming to disarm you and disarm your resistance when the day finally comes so that you do not believe because you saw it in a movie. Meaning, anything you saw in a movie cannot be real. They disarmed you. And then, now you're eating dead people. I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat dead people. But ultimately, a chef is told to cook for the masses and suddenly the masses no longer want real food. They want soil and green. Are you still going to cook? Is there in, an incentive for you to cook? 
If you keep cooking, you need to lie why you keep cooking. That's my point. You're literally cooking food that's going to stay on the table to be consumed by flies and maggots than for human beings to eat it and be nourished. Tell me you will have the incentive to keep cooking. Tell me. You only can if you lie about it. You tell yourself a noble lie as to like, this is why I will keep cooking. There is no place for us anymore. So what am I actually advocating for? Well, I already have my answer and I already know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to say it on YouTube. But it doesn't matter anymore. That's the way I see it. The way I see it is that, Lord, I fulfilled my mission like Noah fulfilled his mission, building the ark, the world got flooded and him and his family were left. And what happened? Noah got drunk, passed out on the floor, had nothing else to do. I'm not saying he was drunk all the time or he, he died a drunk. I'm not saying that, but ultimately Noah got new responsibilities because of the grandchildren a responsibility that mattered because he was now the grandfather of the new civilization to uh, populate the earth. It mattered. Difference is now, it doesn't matter. You see, we are beyond the end game. There's so much artificial light and artificial ways of doing things that the real way of doing it has become meaningless, pointless. To the point where you need to gaslight yourself as to why you need to wake up in the morning. Every Christian 200 years ago and uh, beyond, they all were either martyrs or died of disease or something. Ultimately, they never lived as long as we did or we do. They didn't. 90% of them died on the battlefield, not literally fighting like with sword and shield. But they were preaching, many got martyred, many just got slaughtered because uh, pagans uh, pillaged the village or the city and so on. Many didn't live long. Many were always target practice, but they had a more meaningful life than ours combined in their short life. We're old, getting older, and our life has no meaning, no meaning. I don't want to turn 70 years old dying and looking at the ceiling and questioning, what did I actually do? And is what I did significant? How can it be significant when legit everything around you silence, silences your effort? We have AI and robots and terminators pretty much walking among us at this point telling you to be a cyborg, that you don't have to be a human being anymore. We've lost all real, genuine human connections thanks to this internet stuff, right? We don't even trust each other. You don't really trust another Christian, do you? Only if you've heard their testimony and it's legit, but nine out of 10, you don't. I know I don't anymore. Like the five people I speak to, right? I trust them because we've been together for a long time. We've grown together and so on, have come to the same conclusions and so on. But random people that I don't know who make the claim that I got saved, yada, 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 I examine their actions. I examine their patterns. I examine their grounding in reality only to find out that they're not living in reality. That their ambitions are rooted in delusion, rooted in the American dream scam. What they want is completely materialistic. What they want are things that don't matter. A legendary Christian called William Carey, he said, I don't fear failure. I fear succeeding in things that don't matter. 
everything that I have succeeded in thus far does not matter. Except for one, which is, I spoke to one person, he got saved in 2019. That was it. Right? But everything else, it just doesn't matter. Because a farmer, we are farmers, we, are, we were supposed to toil and plant seeds and so on and plant and, and water them and so on, expecting a harvest. Instead, a drought came about. A famine came about. People hating the one and only true God at all times, all the time. Praying to somebody they don't really know. Reality gaslighting you telling you to jump on online to make your situation better, but online now has classism. You can't, there's no true equality online anymore, especially if you're somebody like me. How many people see this video? Notice how so many people are just drawn to reaction videos. Oh, Charles Dawkins or Richard Dawkins said this, or Jordan Peterson said that. It's all emotional dribble. Reactions operating based on instinct, not logic, not intellect, nothing, nothing of that at all. They can't comprehend anything, so they can't listen to anything. They only want to suck the energy that you emit, as many will be sucking the energy being emitted in this video. One thing is for sure, is that whoever, a Christian that lives too long, legit loses their mind. Every pastor I know lost their mind. Pastors I used to watch, they lost their minds. You want to know why? Because they tried to re-emphasize or re-justify why other people should listen to them or why the Bible says what it says, but it's like, well... Just say what the Bible says. Why are you trying to paraphrase what it says? Why are you trying to um, re-justify what it says? Why can't you just say what it says? And the answer is because people already know what it says. But they need new reasons why to believe why it says. And so when you try to constantly uh, justify the same thing all the time because people don't actually care what's in there. They care about why you are saying they should care about it. You end up losing your mind. You end up exaggerating to the point of pure lies. Because you're trying to keep the sheep in the pen. You're trying to keep the sheep where they are trying to stop them from jumping the fence and going on to the woods and being eaten by wolves, the sheep should know why they are there. But the sheep are now restless. They're restless. Why hasn't the great shepherd come yet? How long are we going to be here? I heard sheep long ago got slaughtered. I mean, I would rather be slaughtered as a sheep than to remain here and grow old standing still. And so, those sheep that are restless, filled with anxiety because they're standing still, looking for a purpose, right? They decide to jump the fence and go seek answers elsewhere. And then become totally, totally consumed by falsehoods. And then, still, they don't die. They just live longer, believing lies, then compromising their faith. The way I see it, Christians that live too long, unfortunately, will have their faith compromised. Uh, it's inevitable. It's completely inevitable. Simply because you have to keep reminding yourself why you believe. Why you believe. You keep asking the question, do I still believe? Do I believe that I believe? And why is that? Because you not you cannot because you cannot live fully what you believe. The world does not allow you. Polluting you from the inside, 
corrupting your heart and you're not even aware of it. People in the, in the old days, they could live what they believe because they were always on the mission. There was no internet, radio, garbage from birth corrupting their soul through their eyes, through their ears, or even their smell of toxic food, but it smells good. Solomon said, you can only enjoy three things in the world. If you're married, the wife of your youth, your food, and your work. Well, young people can't get married anymore. The women have lost their minds. Uh, good luck finding a safe woman in this day and age, under the age of 50. Um, you can't enjoy your food because it's mostly poison, inorganic, right? And now they're sold in green on the shelves. So now you're eating dead people. And you can't enjoy your work because you most likely got fired during the 2020 fiasco um, or you're severely underpaid that it doesn't feel rewarding. So all three means of um, surviving or being okay with the circumstance of your life in this life have now been taken away by the devil. If you cannot enjoy any of these three, you know what you are? A prisoner. And some can say, well, that's okay, I'm a prisoner for Christ. Well, even atheists are in the same prison as we are. The world as it is right now isn't crucifying Christians alone. It's crucifying everybody equally, thus invalidating your own suffering. You don't even know what, what you're suffering for anymore. When the atheist, the Muslim, the whatever next door is in the same jail cell as you. Only you were supposed to be in the jail cell simply because only you were the one who believes. But now it doesn't even matter if you believe or not. You're still in the same jail cell. Paul, Peter said, rejoice. Celebrate when you suffer righteously for Christ. Do not suffer as a criminal suffers. Well, now we are suffering as criminals suffer for just being alive. Our suffering for Christ has been invalidated by this new dispensation. And whoever denies what I just says is a liar. Is somebody who's been, who's now under strong delusion. The only way to reverse this strong delusion upon yourself is to admit that you're a liar. Admit that you've been under a strong delusion pursuing tomorrow fueled by lies. The only reason I'm pursuing tomorrow is because I consumed lies about tomorrow. That tomorrow there's something worth it. There's something worth accomplishing, getting, achieving. I know it isn't. But when I lied to myself, I felt, I felt great comfort of the flesh. My heart was aching, literally aching in pain. Like my, te my chest was tight, couldn't breathe because I felt like a failure and a hypocrite. And then I said, Lord, I didn't even know I was lying. I didn't know, but now that I do know, this is why my heart is aching. I can't live righteously then if what I thought was righteous to do, to inspire people to return to you, that that can't happen. That literally can't happen. That's like me being locked in a dungeon in Afghanistan and telling myself that I'm going to inspire people in this dungeon, or in fact the rats in this dungeon, to be saved, to seek you out. That's, that's how impossible it is. But I believe that rats can somehow be saved. And when I realized that my mission to inspire rats was just an absurdity, I completely fell apart. And I said, well, but this means my mission is done. That means I was supposed to die a long time ago. In fact, I'm not, I'm not actually supposed to be born. I wasn't supposed to be born. 
because my great grandmother uh, had relations with a with a European person, and back then that wasn't allowed. Whether it was infidelity or or rape, I don't know, but that wasn't allowed back then. So one way or the other, I wasn't supposed to be here. Some can say, well, maybe they they actually got married. No, they didn't, because my great grandmother grew up in a forest. They were poor as heck. They grew up in a forest, in a village. So the European great-great-grandfather disappeared, fornicated and left. And because of that one fornication, many generations down, here I am, in which I thought there was a meaning for me. No, there is no meaning. And those who say, uh, Jeremiah 29, brother, God has a plan for you. It doesn't say that in the King James. It says, for I know the thoughts I have for you, right? Thoughts not of evil. I'm paraphrasing here, but ultimately it, it doesn't mean what the NIV says or the uh, New King James or the other ones. It doesn't have the same meaning. Jeremiah 29 has been corrupted uh, in every other Bible except the King James. So you can't even use that because at the end of the day, when Abraham slept with the slave woman, and Ishmael was born because of Abraham's weakness, listening to his wife, who had no business running her mouth, a generation of Arabs believe that they are descendants of Ishmael and have slaughtered billions of people in the name of we are descendants of Abraham and we have claim to the Holy Land. And that Muhammad is our prophet because he too is from the Jewish God. Out of that one, you can't tell me Ishmael was supposed to be born. He wasn't. He wasn't meant to be born. But he was, and then chaos came about. Ishmael, if you read the book of Jasher, he had a hard life. He was a struggler. All because his father was too silly and too weak-minded to just listen to the Lord. And so he had a hard life suffering. He didn't know that his great-great-grandchildren will be Arabs and so on. Some will say it's not, they're not really Arabs. Ultimately, he had many sons. Who's to say one of those sons didn't go to Arabia? Right? Either way, there's a link. And so because of that, look at the mess we're in now. This is the concrete reality that you must acknowledge and face. Whoever wants to spew toxic positivity and say it's not like that, it doesn't have to be like that, you're living in denial. And guess what? It means you can afford it. You can afford to purchase or spend money on delusions. But some of us cannot or will not waste money on delusions, in comfort. You want to say, oh, yay, I'm so blessed to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, a, a Satanist has those things, right? And uh, at the end of the day, a Satanist writing an exam to get good grades and you write an exam to get good grades. If you never studied at all, you never opened the textbook and you passed, we can say that was a blessing. That was a miracle. But if you did, it wasn't. It wasn't. That, that's, that's the honest truth. That's the honest uh, observation. People don't know what blessings are anymore. They really don't. Like you need, people need to properly examine, okay, what is a blessing? I'll give you an example of what a blessing is, right? What an anointing is. It's William Carey. William Carey went to India to preach to the Indians so that they can be saved. He had this desire to go, and guess what? He was blessed with the ability to study any language and know it all in three weeks. That's a blessing, because normal people can't do that. He learned Hindi and all kinds of other Indian languages very quickly. That's a blessing. That's pretty much the power of tongues. And he had the deep desire to go to India. And even though he faced Omega oppression and hardships there, 
Each time something bad happened, he received double in what he lost. Literally like Job, that's a blessing. But guess what? The dispensation of times like that is long gone. William Carey was chosen by the Lord to go to India. And that's why things just worked, even though there were setbacks. Him receiving double after the setback is proof that that's a blessing, that's anointing. But you and me, when things go bad, you don't receive double or anything in return. You just stay where you are with what you have left. That's how it is. As a Christian nihilist, I refuse to, I say I refuse to continue living life lying, using the noble lie, but um, I'm still guilty of living the noble lie because it is by lies that I'm able to wake up tomorrow, not by truth. And this is me being honest. This is the honest truth. It is not by the truth that I continue to live. It's by lies and false hope that I continue to live. The truth in this dispensation cannot inspire anybody. The truth has, not the truth itself, but the world has twisted in a way where the truth doesn't set you free, but it traps you. The truth shall set you free, said Jesus, and he's right. But the world is so jacked up right now that, no, it's actually going to trap you. The truth now will compel you and grieve you that you're not living by the truth. But then if you don't realize that, okay, but Lord, it's not my fault at this point. Like legit right now, it's not my fault. Can this aching, nagging go away? It won't go away. How do you make it go away? You lie. You lie. You create a fabricated reality for yourself so you can function because you can't function in true reality. Because in true reality, your mission is invalid now. There is churches everywhere, Christian media everywhere, bookstores, you name it, bus station everywhere. No one cares. Everyone on the planet has heard the gospel. Everybody. Everybody. Those who want to say, no, but there are some savages in the woods. No, the savages have heard it too. It's been 2,000 years. You mean you tell me in 2,000 years that's not possible? Especially now when there are phones and satellites all over the place. Everyone has heard the gospel and no one cares. And using the example of if people no longer want to eat the right food and want to eat soil and green and slop, we who are chefs, what is our job now? If you are a desperate chef, you will say, okay, let me cook something tasty. Let me take some of the ingredients of soil and green. Let me take some of the corruption and mix it with the truth so that they can at least have a taste of the truth mixed with corruption. You make things worse when you do that. That's why I say our mission is done. Our mission is done. No one my age says what I says. No one. No one my age has thought of what I've thought about. No one my age has come to these conclusions. And no one my age knows everything that I know. No one. Sounds like a bold claim, but who? Even I haven't found anyone who has told me what I'm telling you. No one. Not at anywhere. Zero. Nowhere. I have met people beyond my years, younger, middle, same, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I'm not saying lie to yourself to wake up tomorrow. I'm saying I had to lie to myself to wake up today and how I have to lie again to wake up tomorrow and look forward to things that will never come in order to remain alive. Um, this is no way to live. 
This is not what the Lord wanted for us. The world is too twisted now and you only build frustration for yourself and other people. Other people who try to encourage you, falsely so, using toxic positivity, that's false hope. They don't hear what you're saying. They don't look at what you're talking about. They just feel like what you're saying is negative and wish to make you feel better by giving you feel good words because they can't comprehend anything. Our mission is done. My mission is done. I have a gigantic CV behind me, a gigantic resume behind me of all the things that I have done in the public, in the private, the Lord knows what I've done. How many dragons I've slain and so on. He knows. I don't have to prove it to nobody. Right? But I can see now that, Lord, look, the longer I live, the longer I'm going to rely on lies to stay alive. Because I can't talk about you, Lord. Talking about you is supposed to make a difference, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't. I'm not interested in getting people uh, frustrated because I'm calling out on their rubbish and their falsehoods when even I need, I need falsehoods to wake up the next day. I'm no longer qualified to judge anybody anymore. I'm no longer qualified to call anybody out anymore when I need a lie to wake up the next day. Because the truth of the matter is, no one cares about the truth. No one can hear the truth. No one can see the truth. No one can comprehend the truth. And so, what's the point of the truth? It's over. It's done. It's completely done now. I, I, don't, I don't know the point of it all anymore. I, I really don't. This is very new. This has never happened in history before. People can say, look at the signs, look at the prophecy, the false Christ rising. That's been happening since the 70s. You know how many fake Jesuses have come about since the 70s? I wasn't even born. But looking at the history of it, I had no idea. There was such an enormous fake spiritual awakening since the 70s. The, the, the yoga craziness back then. The, the yogis pretending to be Jesus and, and so on. It's insane that actually the worst of the worst spiritual delusion already happened. It already happened in the late 1900s. Where people abandoned the Lord but were still thirsty of something spiritual and they went to the fake Jesus stuff and these other places to the point where now they are going to the digital world creating AI uh, communities and so on. Worshipping idols, their favorite, favorite video game character, becoming their best friend. Even me. Even me who needs his favorite cartoon characters to be constantly present before his eyes to decrease the anxiety. Because despite being an adult now, these cartoons that I grew up with ease my pain, ease my anxiety. They bring comfort. And that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the Holy Spirit that brings comfort. But that's not my fault, now is it? I'm telling you the reality of the world right now. I'm telling you how people are coping. But guess what? Coping is idolatry. We're all guilty of idolatry. You might not worship Allah or Krishna or whatever, but you sure as heck worship Call of Duty, the video game, if you're playing it too often, and it is your number one dependency on feeling better. I'm sure you worship social media, scrolling, worship TikTok. This is how you cope. You're not living anymore, you're already dead. And pretending to be alive by clicking buttons and watching TV shows all day long 
that makes you feel alive. That's not what the Lord intended. So even you, even me, is guilty of a noble lie and idolatry. But there's nothing I can do about it. But there is something I can do about it. But I'm not going to say it here. We now have to live a lie. I don't want to. Living has become pointless. You want to live for nothing? Like Yukia Mishima, a popular Japanese um, philosopher who committed suicide. And it's not really suicide, but nonetheless, he, he, he cuts himself. He said, I dread living for nothing and dying for nothing. So while, while in my youth, he was in his 40s, I suppose, and I'm paraphrasing here, let me die for something. Because I can't live the idea of truth and honesty that the Japanese once believed. The new Japan after World War II has abandoned all those beliefs. I can't live in this world because it makes me disingenuous. So let me die upholding the ideals of old because then my death will mean something because my life wouldn't mean something if I continue to live. And I totally understand. I can't, I can't dishonor the guy. It was a sacrifice to the ideal that he thought true. We can't even be martyrs in this world anymore. How many people have a passport? How many people can afford to just walk into the Taliban um, shooting range and have a Bible in the air? Oh yeah, they'll totally slaughter you if they do that, if you do that, but can you even get there? Do you even have the guts? It's not like they don't know the Bible, they know it. They just don't care. See? I'm a Christian nihilist. It's all meaningless. It's all pointless. More than it's ever been. Solomon said it's meaningless. He gave three ways to deal with it and all those three ways have been taken away. You can't, you can't get married. If you do, it'll be a burden that you regretted. Um, you can't enjoy your food because it's poisoned and now we have dead people on the shelf. And you can't enjoy your work because you got fired or you're underpaid and uh, you feel like a slave. The three ways to functionally live in this world have now been taken away by the devil. There is nowhere else to go now. So what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Um, but I'm guilty. And whoever denies that they aren't guilty either. You're lying. You're under a triple delusion. You're lying about the fact that you're lying. And you're lying about what you're saying. Because you don't even realize what you're saying anymore. But my awareness of living in this new delusion in order to wake up tomorrow. It's temporary. Because as I said, the longer you live in a lie, whether you know it or not, you slowly begin to believe it. And it slowly begins to corrupt you. If I live another 40 years, I will lose my mind. I don't want that. Do you want that? You want to be like those crazy old Christians who are vicious crazy hypocritical grannies and grandpas but a bible thumpers is that what you want you want to be so removed from reality you can't see the plight of your children or grandchildren they are problems that they have to face in this economy but you want to tell them about jesus but you can't look outside to see that the world's on fire and each time they come back with scratches and burns you tell them it's their fault why do you do this? Because you are delusional. You lived too long. Now you can't even hear the cries of your own children. But you're going to tell them that Jesus is their only way. 
Yes, he is. But you're corrupt now. You have no use to Jesus or your children. You push them away from the Lord. You push them away from you. This is exactly what happens. This is exactly what happens. I used to wonder why do Christians fall away? How is that even possible? How is it even possible to backslide? If I was never under a fellowship with the friends I have, who knows where I'd be right now? Who knows how many liquor bottles I'll have? The anchor was um, congregating with the brethren, the real brethren, not the garbage that is in the churches where there's music and female pastors and uh, transgender weirdos running around because that just corrupts you further. Ultimately, stop lying, people, because I'm telling you, the Lord even said, there will be many who said, Lord, Lord, I said this in your name and yada, yada, yada. Meaning, signifying that the Holy Spirit was given to you. You even received the power of the Holy Spirit. But somewhere along the line, you lost your mind. Even Jude says, contend for the faith. You literally can't contend for it anymore here. To contend now is to accelerate the degradation of your mind. To contend back then was the deeds that you do justify your belief, right? But now our deeds do not really matter. That's the problem. They don't matter because they don't reap a harvest. They don't reap a return of investment. So your deeds itself are invalid. Everything you touch, you feel like a ghost walking through walls, incapable of working. You plant grapes and want to sell and give to people who say, I don't eat food anymore. I eat soil and green. And then invalidating your work, invalidating your deeds, and forcing you to reflect on your belief, then you try to convince yourself that the belief is still um, the way to go, but you just can't live the belief, and then you lose your mind. It's absolutely insane. Until next time.